So today I'm going to be learning more about the Finnish military by watching this video, it's called Finland's Impact on NATO. So of course we know what happened with Russia invading Ukraine and something that happened because of that is Finland's uh, sped up process to be part of NATO and I think it's a wonderful thing that Finland has become part of NATO. It's having a country with such a strong military history like Finland for NATO just makes it so much stronger as an organisation. To have a country that has such a strong military as well is important. And even things like having the conscription in Finland, like just a capable con a country full of capable people uh, in a military respect. So interested to know their impact on NATO so far. Let's watch this video. We can learn more about it. And you can tell me what you think about it as always. The main feature of the Finnish people and the Finnish army was is you could describe it by saying Sisu, which is mental resilience and readiness to cope with harsh conditions and still you are able to continue. Sisu. So tell me if that's, is that a well-known thing? Is that only in military? Is that like a mentality that all Finnish people have? Sisu? Uh, I've not heard that, I don't think, before, but I really like the concept of it. And yeah, again, it makes sense why fin Finland would have such a strong military, mi military with that mentality. They say that ketju on yhtä vahva kuin sen heikoin lenkki. And that means that the chain is as strong as its weakest link. So we want to make sure that our chain is very durable. Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine not only changed the security landscape in Europe, but also acted as a catalyst for Finland's accession to NATO, membership which was confirmed in April 2023. We decided to join because we saw that the membership would increase our security to this new environment that is for us. That's the very basic, simple reason. But from a military and geographic standpoint, what does NATO membership mean for the country itself? And what does Finland bring to the NATO alliance? We share the same neighbor than the Ukrainians. It means that also we can provide some experience and expertise about how the Russians they are behaving in, in our neighborhood. We have a 1,300 kilometers long eastern border with Russia. That is something we have to always keep, keep in mind. Even as a member of NATO, Finland is responsible for defending its own country. And how is that? Like, what I remember reading is that recently, or I think throughout time, there's always been moments where Finland has closed its border to Russians, I think, or maybe reduced access. But I heard that, like, I think it was earlier this year that Russia was actually trying to put migrants illegal migrants through the border and try and flood into Finland. Is that something that actually happened? Is that just over exaggerated in the media? What's the situation with that? And yeah, it makes complete sense for Finland to join NATO, like being literally bordering Russia, seeing what Russia did to Ukraine. Of course, we hope that never happens to Finland, but there's always a chance. So it's good that Finland has uh, got that extra protection from NATO. But I, yeah, really excited to see what Finland brings to NATO because I know it's a lot as well. Finland's membership of NATO effectively doubled the size of the border between NATO allies and Russia. And that border requires monitoring at all times. <laughs> Suomen ja Venäjän välinen raja. Minä olen koiraohjaajana, toimin täällä, täällä ja tuota, koira ilmassa ja jos on tullut raja yli henkilöitä, niin koira ottaa sen jälleen ylös. Well equipped and with military training, the Finnish border guard operates under the Ministry of Interior. However, if a crisis was to occur here, they could be integrated into the Finnish defence forces and could therefore be the first line of defence. No, kyllä minun mielestä on se on. Valavuttu on. Se pidän tärkeänä. No, se on olla itsenäisessä Suomessa ja sen takia. Eli haluaa, että Suomi on jatkossakin itsenäinen maan. And while there is no immediate threat on the border, 
This proximity to Russia is what prompted Finland to abandon their neutral status and join the alliance. But membership in this region works both ways. If you think about the, our location in high north region and also the Baltic Sea region, both uh, areas with significant strategic value and we are one of the stakeholders in this area, so it is important. Mm. Yeah, it's like from that part you can see like what uh, this, this, this part up here, it's like obviously a lot of countries in the south don't have the experience of combat or training in this this sort of like climate, this sort of terrain and that sort of thing. So Finland has a lot of like a lot to bring in terms of experience and training that a lot of other countries can actually offer and it can actually it's such a good mutual relationship that these that Finland can bring to everybody else actually. In this area, so it is important. Finland has a population of just 5.5 million. However, the wartime strength of its armed forces is a substantial 280,000. And the reason for that is its comprehensive conscription service. Conscription is the core of our system. It's a glue which combines the whole Finnish nations. Everybody has been living in tent with other Finnish guys. Everybody has been taking part in these exercises having field rations, getting cold, getting wet, and fighting together. According to the Finnish constitution, every citizen is obligated to take part in national defence. All men between 18 and 60 must complete military service, and women can participate on a voluntary basis. Inte on aina ollut mun haave, siis mä oon pienestä asti aina haaveillut, että jotenkin kun iso vanhemmat tai niinku paappa varsinkin kertonut tarinoita sen omista kokemuksista Suomen niinku armeijassa, niin tuli semmonen fiilis, että vitsi, että mäkin haluan lähteä ja jotenkin muutenkin semmonen niinku maanpuolustustahto, että kyllä mä niinku täällä haluan olla. Yeah, that, I, I do think inscription. The way Finland does it is a great thing for the military, but just for the people themselves, uh, just for a lot of the skills that you can learn, the discipline and so on. But recently in the UK, the previous government, before they got voted out, were actually talking about bringing back like national service conscription. And it was just universally like derided. People just didn't want it. For me, I actually think it's actually a very good thing if you do it right, as I said, it brings a lot of skills to people that can be transferable to corporate, to your work life as well. Uh, but people in the UK got quite short term thinking generally. Uh, but yeah, I think this is something, yeah, another another very unique thing that Finland can bring. We it's have seen the increasing number in willingness uh, to defend the country after the war started in Ukraine. The numbers were high already before, but now all the people, men and women, are more willing to do something for his or her country. Finland also has one of the largest artillery capabilities in Europe, with an arsenal of approximately 1,500 weapons. We have a modern system of uh, far-reaching joint fires but the main essence of our defense system and the extra value for NATO is our capabilities to fight a long-lasting warfare in deep, deep forest area. Finnish joining to NATO increases the safety and security in, in Europe and especially in the Baltic Sea region. With Finland's location as one of the nations bordering the Baltic Sea, and with the Gulf of Finland an important hub for trade and transport, Finland's Navy needs to perform a variety of roles. The Navy main task include surveillance of our territorial waters and repelling maritime attack and uh, territorial violations, if any. And of course the Navy is taking care of the, our vital sea line of communications and protecting those. As well as these primary functions, the Finnish Navy performs multiple tasks related to the protection and defence of the surrounding waters. This mine countermeasures ship is responsible for detecting, identifying and neutralising underwater explosive threats like sea mines. Previous wars have proven that the Baltic Sea and Gulf of Finland is very easily mineable. We're talking about shallow waters, rocky bottoms, very hard sound profile. Conditions are very hard for mine hunting. And that's what we're good at. 
and that that is something that we we can bring to the NATO allies. As well as protecting the Finnish coastline from the sea, it is also protected from the air. And the backbone of the Finnish Air Force is its fleet of 62 FA-18 Hornet jet fighters. We need to be ready 24-7 for the identification missions, mainly at the Gulf of Finland and, and Baltic Sea. So that's how we do it. That includes air surveillance, uh, which means the recognized air picture which the Finnish Air Force is providing for the, all the services in, in the Finnish Defence Forces. The Finnish Air Force has long trained and operated alongside international partners, but since Finland's accession into NATO, that cooperation has been stepped up as they integrate into Allied air defence strategy. It's about doing the same thing on the same way to be effective together. And that is important, that we can really work together closely, sharing the tactics and the knowledge. Behind that is the wartime capability for air operations. And with the FA-18 set to be replaced with 64 powerful F-35 fighter aircraft starting in 2026, Allied air defences in the region will become even stronger and more integrated than they already are. Finland's defence forces are woven into the fabric of its society. It's all about geography, it's about history, it's about population, how we think we can survive here. It's everything, I would say, in the Finnish defence solution. Bringing this comprehensive approach to NATO strengthens the alliance in vulnerable regions such as the High North and the Baltic Sea and reinforces the principle of collective defence on NATO's eastern flank. For Finland, joining the alliance means they are protected under Article 5. An attack on one is an attack on all. Yeah, very interesting video. Really cool to see like, the power of the Finnish military. Uh, yeah, really happy that they're part of NATO as well. Such a, like great addition for NATO and yeah again like it's such a like contentious time when what's going on in Ukraine is going on like and you don't know what Russia's going to do next it's good to have like that extra border against Russia so yeah a lot of like respect to Finland and the Finnish military the f people who go through conscription the, the Finnish soldiers and so on so tell me what you think about this tell me what what you think Finland can bring to NATO and what you think NATO can give to Finland as well, in your opinion. Thanks.